Hello everyone and welcome to Numa Life Kids Online. I'm so happy that you could join us today. We're going to have so much fun with today's story. So today's story is going to come from the book of Exodus, which is the second book in the Bible. How many of you remember the story of Joseph? So, Joseph, remember when he was sold by his brothers into slavery and he ended up in Egypt? And he became a, a big ruler in in Egypt and he was in charge of basically all of Egypt and he was second in command to Pharaoh. Do you remember that story? Great. So now where we pick up from, this is 400 years later after Joseph was in Egypt and he became second in command to Pharaoh. So now what was happening was 400 years later, the Israelites were still living in Egypt and as the years were going by, the, Egypt, the, the Israelites were expanding. They were becoming more and more and more people and becoming more powerful. So the Pharaoh at that time felt very threatened by the Israelites who kept on multiplying and multiplying. And he decided to make them slaves so that they could build all the buildings in Egypt and do all the hard labor work. And so when this happened, the people of Israel were in captivity or were the slaves for the Egyptians for many, many years. And they suffered under really bad conditions. They were treated so badly by the Egyptians. And so they would cry out to God and ask for God to deliver them from the situation. So we find ourselves introduced to a man called Moses. God appeared to Moses and gave him a command to go and speak to Pharaoh and ask that he release his people from slavery. It took a lot of convincing because Moses was obviously very afraid because he knew how powerful Pharaoh was at the time and so God um, showed Moses how he could trust God in that situation. So now we pick up the story from when Moses goes and speaks to Pharaoh. He had to go to speak to Pharaoh 10 times, 10 times asking Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. And each time Pharaoh would say no. Now get this, every time that Pharaoh would say no, there would be plagues that would come upon all of Egypt and the Egyptian people at the time. It was terrible. There was sickness, there were insects, the Nile River turned into blood. It was a lot of things that happened to the point where on the 10th plague, which was when um, each firstborn son in Egypt was died actually in the middle of the night that's when pharaoh when his son died he decided enough was enough and he decided to let the israelites go so when the israelites were finally released from egypt um pharaoh told them you know what they can take whatever they want i just want them gone because he was so upset about what had happened to his son so as the people were leaving and they, Moses was leading them out of Egypt, they came into a place um, that was a desert, right? And so they were in the desert and then before them was the Red Sea. So as they camped on the shores of the Red Sea, back in Egypt, Pharaoh decided that no, he had made the wrong decision. He started thinking, wait, I just got rid of all my slaves so who's gonna do the work now how are we gonna survive how is Egypt gonna prosper if we do not have people who work for us so he sent all his soldiers to go after the Israelites to bring them back so as the Egyptians were coming after the Israelites God caused there to be a cloud that would um, 
make it difficult for the Egyptian soldiers to see where they were going. And so when the people of Israel who were camped on the banks of the Red Sea realized that the Egyptian soldiers were coming after them, they became very scared. And they actually became quite upset with Moses. They started accusing him of bringing them out into the desert to die. They even said things like, you should have left us in Egypt. We were much better off than we are here now. Look, they're coming after us. We're going to die. So they were scared. And so Moses prayed to God, asking for help because he didn't know what to do. And God came through. So this is what happened. So Moses, as he was praying, God told him to, to put his hand over the sea. And as he did that, the sea parted into two. So there was water on the left and water on the right. And a dry path opened up right in the middle of the sea. So the Israelites began to walk through the Red Sea on the dry ground and crossing it. So as they were making it onto the other side of the sea, the Israelite soldiers were coming after them, right? And as soon as the last person made it across, the last Israelite made it across the Red Sea, God brought all that walls of water down on the Egyptian soldiers and they all drowned. So when the people were across, they realized that, wait, God actually saved us. He actually kept his promise that he was going to deliver us to a promised land, a better land where they could live as free people and not be in slavery. And so what do we learn from this story? Personally, I learned that in times when you face difficult situations, God is always there. All you have to do is pray and ask God to give you the strength and the courage to get through a difficult situation. I'll give you an example. When I was about 10, there was a music competition at school that um, our teachers asked us to enter. Now, back then, I was so scared. I was very shy. Like, I couldn't see myself standing on a stage and, and singing in front of a lot of people. I would get very, very scared. And so, I prayed to God. I remember I said a little prayer to God. I was like, God, I want to be a part of the singing competition, but I'm so scared. What do I do? Please help me. I really want to do this. The next day when I went to school, I decided to sign up. And so when I, when I signed up and the day of the competition came, I was nervous and I was scared, but somehow I had courage. God just gave me this courage to just go out on stage and sing my heart out and just do the best that I can. So when I went on stage and I began to sing, everyone enjoyed it so much that the whole audience started singing along with me because it was such a good song and they actually enjoyed it. And so as the audience was singing and I was singing, all those nerves and all that fear that I had began to disappear. And I, I felt so happy and so proud. And guess what? I won the competition. So you see, sometimes when you are scared or you're not sure or you find yourself in a situation where you don't know how to get out of it just remember to pray to God and ask for his help when you have faith when you believe in yourself God always comes through every single time I hope you enjoyed today's story and I hope that it encourages you to remember to have faith and to put that faith in action by doing the very thing that you're afraid to do, just do it, have the courage, and you'll see. God will make it all turn out beautifully in the end. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to spending more time with you in our live sessions at church, and can't wait to see you again soon. Okay, take care. Bye.